Hi, we're not on the range today. We're at one of our training facilities. And recently, a lot of people have contacted me asking various questions about short barrel AR platform firearms. Well, because of donations to the Patreon account, thank you everybody, I was able to purchase this Ruger AR556 with a 10 and a half inch barrel. Now, many questions have been asked, but I want to today deal primarily with two of them. And those are, how do the short barreled AR platforms compare to 16 inch and 20 inch barreled AR platforms in terms of power and accuracy? Well, I have AR platforms with 16 and 20 inch barrels. Let's shoot them side by side with this and see what we can learn. First, let's discuss velocity. I've got my chronograph set up at seven yards and as a basis of comparison, I'm going to start with my Colt AR-15A2, which has a 20 inch barrel and I have it loaded with Federal XM193 ammunition. That's 5.56 NATO with a 55 grain full metal jacket spear point projectile. Let's see what kind of velocities we get with this. Thirty-two sixty-three. Thirty-two fifty-two. Thirty-two fifty. Thirty-two sixty-seven. Thirty-two sixty-seven. Thirty-two forty-nine. and 3268. Now when you get two readings that are the same in a row, that's indicative that you may have had a malfunction, so we'll throw out one of those 3267s. But now let's see how this compares to a 16 inch barrel platform. This rifle is also loaded with the XM193 ammunition, but the upper on this is Rock River Arms and it has a 16 inch barrel. 2397. 3077. 3101. 3069. 3108. 3080. 3131 and 3095. Now that first reading was very odd. We're going to throw that one out and go with the other numbers. But now let's see how both of these compare to the 10 and a half inch barrel. And now our Ruger AR556 with its 10 and a half inch barrel. And it's also loaded with the Federal XM193 ammunition. 2808 2721 2802 2836 2845 2758 and 2780. Now let's go crunch the numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers and here they are. And it comes with the usual caveats that chronographs don't always agree with each other. And certain environmental factors like elevation and ambient temperature can affect chronograph results. But with the 20 inch barrel, I got a mean velocity of 3258. Now, when we drop to the 16 inch barrel, we lose velocity as expected. And we got a mean velocity of 3094. That's a loss of 164 feet per second. But when we drop to the 10 and a half inch barrel, we lose a lot of velocity with a mean of 2792 and a loss of 300 two feet per second from the 16 inch barrel and if you compare the 10 and a half to the 20 inch barrel that's a loss of 466 feet per second so the shorter barrel does result in a significant loss of velocity so our shorter barrel affects power but how will it affect accuracy let's shoot this target from 50 yards and see what kind of accuracy we get I don't have my earphones on but I do have my earplugs in now the concept is that the shorter barrel rifle will be less accurate and that can be true in a very limited sense, but typically in the hands of the average shooter, 
the shorter barreled rifle will produce less accuracy. And that has a lot to do with sighting plane. The shorter barreled rifle will have less distance between the front and rear sights, so in the hands of the average shooter, it can produce less accuracy. So to put that to the test, I'm going to shoot our 50 yard target offhand, and I'm going to start with a 20 inch barrel. Let's take a look at the target. And here's my group from 50 yards offhand with the 20 inch barrel. Now I'll put up a new target and we'll see how the 16 inch barrel compares to this. Now we'll try the 16 inch barreled carbine. And I have to point out that this is not my rifle, so it is not zeroed for me. So we don't need to concern ourselves as much with the location of the group as we do with the size of it. And let's go take a look at the group. So here we see our group of five and one flyer. So not too bad. Now we'll put up a new target and try this with our 10 and a half inch barrel. And now our 10 and a half inch barrel. Let's take a look at the target. So here's our group of the 10 and a half inch barrels, and I put up the groups of the 20 and the 16 inch barrels. Is there a difference in accuracy with the three barrel lengths? A little bit. Is it enough to make a difference? You be the judge. So not a lot of difference in accuracy in 50 yard deliberate slow fire. What if I'm trying to shoot a little bit faster and at multiple targets? I'll go back 25 yards and I'll shoot one, two, three, three, two, one, firing as fast as I think I can hit. And we'll see what differences there are in speed and accuracy between short and long barrel. And we'll start with a 20 inch barrel. Let's take a look at the targets. Here's four hits, here's four hits, and here's four hits. Now we'll put up three new targets and try that with a short barrel. And now the 10 and a half inch barrel. Let's take a look at the targets. So here's four hits, here's four hits, and here's four hits. So the firearm with the 10 and a half inch barrel was significantly faster, and if there's any difference in accuracy, it's not much. So we've seen the differences in accuracy shooting offhand from fairly short ranges, but now I'll go back 100 yards and shoot from a bench rest, and I'll shoot the target on your left with the 10 and a half inch barrel and the target on your right with a 20 inch barrel, and now let's see how the groups compare.
and it would appear that our longer barreled rifle holds a slightly smaller group, but only slightly. Now I've got two targets set up at 300 yards, and I'll shoot the target on the left with a 10 and a half inch barrel, the target on the right with a 20 inch barrel. Normally I'd have the camera down there next to the target so you can see the shot holes as the bullets hit the target, but with the wind that's just come up and with this rifle, I'm going to keep the camera back here. Now let's go take a look at the targets. Well, here's our two groups with the 10 and a half and the 20 inch barrel. Now a couple of things to point out. First, we know the chronograph told us that the shorter barrel would have 466 feet per second less velocity. So we know there's going to be drop in both rifles, but how much more drop would we get with a shorter barrel? Well, at 100, I was aiming center. At 300, I was aiming at neck level to compensate for the drop. And it would appear the shorter barrel did give us more drop, although not that much more. Also, you notice the shorter barrel, the group is off to the left. Well, remember at 100, the group was off to the left. But off camera, I fired a few more shots and zeroed that at 100. So it's off to the left now. That could be because of me, and it could be because of the slight breeze we have blowing. And with the lower velocity, that rifle will be affected to a greater degree by the breeze than the longer barrel would. However, if you look at the size of the group, now there's one flyer, and that is just me. But comparing the size of the two groups, I'd be hard pressed to say that the 20 inch barrel was any more accurate. So when you go from the 20 inch to the 10 and a half inch barrel, you lose 466 feet per second. And now the question becomes, how much difference will that make in the effectiveness of your 5.56 round? And to test that, we'll use the meat target. Now, for those who haven't seen it before, the meat target is leather jacket skin followed by pork steak pectorals, pork ribs, a bag of oranges to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, four layers of t-shirt on the front, four layers on the back. And today, instead of the high-tech fleece bullet stop, we're going to do something different and use two liter bottles of soda. Also something different about this particular meat target is that normally it's leather jacket skin. This is leather couch skin, which was donated by a viewer. Thank you very much. So I'm going to shoot this from 50 yards with our 10 and a half inch barrel and let's see what kind of effect we get. Okay, that was two shots. Let's try a couple more. I said that our pork pectorals were pork steaks, they're actually pork chops. But either way, all our 5.56 projectiles did was make 5.56 holes in them. Our ribs on the front of the target, the same story, just 5.56 holes, and none of the projectiles actually hit a rib. But here's where those projectiles are starting to tumble, and so our orange lung tissue has a lot of orange puree. 
Now we still see the evidence of tumbling in the ribs in the back of the target, which is why our holes in the ribs in the back of the target are so much bigger. And in this case, where the projectiles hit ribs, shattered them. We also see no evidence of fragmentation. All of these projectiles appear to have stayed in one piece. And we saw that although our soda jugs make a very poor bullet stop, they do show us that once these projectiles have gone completely through the meat target, they still have a fair amount of power left in them. So now I'll put together a new meat target, we'll shoot it from 50 yards with a 20 inch barrel, and see if there's any difference in effectiveness. And here's the one projectile we did recover, and you can see that it's flat, but it is still completely intact. And now we have our new meat target set up, and I'll shoot this from 50 yards with a 20 inch barrel. So with the 20 inch barrel we have a lot more velocity and it looks like that greater velocity is still just putting bullet holes in our pork chop pectorals. However, these bullet holes look like they're a little bit bigger than they were before, as if that greater velocity is doing just a little more damage. And the same story on our ribs on the front of the target. We see bullet holes, but they look a little bit bigger. The greater velocity is doing just a little more damage. Now after going through those ribs is when those projectiles are really starting to tumble. And the result is that our orange lung tissue is just demolished. We also see on the back of the target, these ribs have a lot of damage, much more than the ribs on the previous meat target. And we're seeing evidence of fragmentation. So it looks like our greater velocity is making a significant difference in how much damage it does to the target. Now, like before, we recovered one projectile. Let's take a look at it. And here's the one projectile we recovered. So we see a lot of fragmentation and it did significantly more damage to the target. And this fragmentation can result in a lower potential for overpenetration. And there you have it. We saw that as our barrel got shorter, we lost velocity. But going from the 20 to the 16 inch barrel, we didn't lose very much. Going from the 20 to the 10 and a half inch barrel, we lost a lot of velocity and that definitely showed in the effect it had on the meat target. But as far as accuracy, just shooting offhand at relatively short ranges, there wasn't enough difference to talk about. And when we were shooting 300 yards, the conventional wisdom is that the longer barrel will allow the average shooter to shoot more accurately. But in this case, that didn't really hold true. Yes, with lower velocity, we had greater drop at that distance, but as long as you can estimate distance correctly and adjust your sights accordingly, it looks like you'll be able to hit the target just as well with a short barrel as with the long barrel. So when we're comparing barrel length, sometimes that can make a difference, but quite often it's the shooter that makes more difference. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the short barrel AR platform video.